What's up, fellas? My name is Tucker, and we're back with some more crazy NBA trades. We're getting pretty close to the start of the offseason here as we just started the NBA Finals yesterday, but that doesn't mean we can't take a look at trades. We already had the Kemba Walker trade that was just this weird mirage. I'm not even sure if it even happened just because of the timing of the year within it, 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 it which it occurred, uh, but in this video, we've got a handful of really, really cool, interesting just kind of thought-provoking trades uh, that I found uh, around the internet, and that's what we're going to talk about today's video. Quickly, before we get started, if you like talking about fake trades, if you like talking about the NBA, I've got a perfect place for you. Every single week, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, I stream on Twitch every single week, five times a week for a couple of hours. If you guys want to come hang out, uh, you know, talk to me about NBA trades, talk to me about the finals, talk to me about the offseason stuff, that's a great place to be. There's a link to it in the description. The, the, the link itself is on screen right here. I'd love to see you guys come hang out. It's a great place to just kind of hang out and talk with other people that share similar interests, that love to talk about the NBA, things like that. So consider checking that out. With that long-winded intro out of the way, let's go and get started with the trades. Okay, first up, we got to start with a big one, right? Damian Lillard to New York. In this trade, the Knicks get Lillard and Terrence Ross, and then there's these free agency moves at the bottom, including them signing guys like Blake Griffin. Ignore that. Port these are not my trades, by the way. I should have made that clear. None of these are mine. I just found these, okay? Portland gets Norvell Pell. Big value. Obi Top and Emmanuel quickly, and what I believe is five first-round picks, including one of the Dallas picks. The Magic get Kevin Knox in three seconds because they're giving up Terrence Ross here. Okay, so... Uh, the Knicks get Lillard, which is incredibly exciting. Dame, Terrence Ross, Julius Randle, really, really cool team. I, if, if, if I could snap my fingers and make one thing happen tomorrow within the NBA, it would probably be Dame to the Knicks, Portland getting fair value. I would snap my fingers and make that happen because I think Dame in New York would be so, so, so fun. Okay. Having said that, Portland's not getting enough value here. I mean, this is literally exactly what I just talked about in yesterday's video with the role players and a thousand picks thing. Damian Lillard is worth more than five first round picks and you can really like Obi Top and Emmanuel quickly, and Emmanuel quickly. that's cool. But realistically, if you're an Knicks fan, you're like, you know what, I really want to get Dame. You're going to have to give up RJ at least. At absolute least, you're going to have to give up. There, there's no Damian Lillard trade that exists that you're not giving up RJ Barrett, just to be clear. Okay. And then the Magic, they exist here, I guess, to get the Knicks, Terrence Ross. I, I, don't, I, don't I don't get that. I don't understand why the Magic even exists. I don't understand why this can't just be Dame for players and picks. I don't really know why Orlando needs to exist within this trade. Unless they wanted to provide more value to Portland... But I don't think the Knicks need any more value here. They're already getting Damian Lillard, and I think Terrence Ross is a nice player. It'd be cool to see this go down if you're a Knicks fan. Uh, if you're a Portland fan, you're looking at this wondering, what in the world is this monstrosity? But hey, next up now, big time four-team deal. Minnesota gets Josh Richardson, Demonis Sabonis, Maxi Kleber, Tyrell Terry, the 10th pick in the draft this year, and a 2025 future first from New Orleans. The Pelicans get Carl Anthony Towns, Malik Beasley, and Malcolm Brogdon. The Mavs get Eric Bledsoe, and Steven Adams, and the Pacers get Brandon Ingram, and they sign Lonzo Ball on a sign and trade. Goodness gracious, these rosters are completely different by the end of this one, huh? Okay, so Minnesota trades Towns and Beasley because reasons. Uh, quick side note, Minnesota's a team I'm watching for this upcoming season. It seems like everybody really likes the coach, especially offensively. Started to play better down the stretch. Uh, they didn't really give up as high of a pick as they possibly could have in the lottery. Lots of talent there. Team to keep an eye on, by the way. So I'm not sure they're making a Carl Anthony Town straight, but it's for fun. We'll take a look at it anyway. Uh, they're shaking up the roster to get I mean, some younger assets. Tyrell Terry, the 10th pick in the draft. A future Pelicans first, which could be valuable. Josh Richardson on an expansion Inspiring and Demonis Sabonis, who's who's an all-star caliber player, right? The big intriguing thing here for me is the Pelicans. They're, I guess, recognizing that the Brandon Ingram Zion thing isn't going to work, so they're bringing in Cat and Malik Beasley. Uh, the problem is they don't have any more guards, right? No more Eric Bledsoe, no more Lato Ball. They don't have anybody in the backcourt that can uh, create for them. So then they also bring in Malcolm Brogdon. What a crazy Pelicans roster this would be. Looking at Brogdon, Beasley, Towns, Zion, and whoever else. Man, Towns, Towns and Zion together, I'd lose my mind. Dallas. Shifting the roster around, but without giving up Chris Tapp's Porzingis, they bring in uh, two really good defenders, and Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams kind of round out that roster. Not a big Eric Bledsoe guy, especially if he's going to be off the ball alongside Luka, but Bledsoe, Luka, Adams, KP, interesting group there in Dallas. And then the Pacers 
are probably the most intriguing th play, uh, intriguing team, goodness gracious, of this entire trade. Sabonis and Brogdon in exchange for Ingram and a sign and trade for Lonzo Ball is essentially what's happening here. I don't hate it. Um, I, I think that Ingram is really, really talented and I'm already kind of just wanting him to go somewhere else because I want all the Zion all the time in New Orleans and I think that's going to hinder what Ingram can do, not only reputation-wise, but on the court as well, productivity-wise. I'm cool. I, I'm cool with Brandon Ingram and Indy. I'm very cool with Carl Anthony Towns in New Orleans. I just, I, I mean, New Orleans is it, or excuse me, uh, Minnesota is not, you know, trading away Carl Anthony Towns right now. They're not blowing up their roster. The Mavs are at least relatively intriguing. This is crazy. I give credit whoever came up with this because this is wild. It's a lot of moving pieces. Of course, it's not incredibly realistic, but it is fun just to kind of imagine what this would look like. Specifically, Brandon Ingram and Indy. I like that. Next up now, my beloved Brooklyn Nets are shifting their roster around. There's, there's actually a lot of maneuvering happening on these sites with Brooklyn. It's personally really intriguing to me. So they're getting Rodney Hood, Justin Holiday, and most importantly, Miles Turner. The Pacers, once again involved here, are getting Joe Harris, TLC, Nicholas Claxton, and the 27th pick in the draft this year. And the Raptors are also involved. They're here. They're getting DeAndre Jordan and two second round picks. So Brooklyn, it's clear what they're doing. They need to address the five spot, and they're going to make sure that they still have role players there because they're giving up someone like Joe Harris. Justin Holiday can shoot Rodney Hood exists. Um, Indiana is getting Joe Harris, TLC, Nick Claxton in a first. Again, trying to get value out of someone like Miles Turner. I don't really understand the concept of getting rid of Turner so that Simonis can be there at the full-time five. And then bringing in Nicholas Claxton. Like, they have other bigs on their roster that they can run out there and try and develop. They don't really need to bring in Claxton in exchange for Turner. So this is not very good value, in my opinion, for Indiana, with the exception of getting one of the better shooters in the league in Joe Harris. Questionable value there for me uh, in terms of Miles Turner, in terms of just where you're kind of redistributing uh, that asset throughout the rest of the roster. And then again, Toronto, just like with Orlando in the first trade, I don't know why they're here. I don't know why they exist. Uh, I mean, I guess they get second round picks out of it. But to be completely clear, I, I really don't think there's a scenario where Brooklyn's trading DeAndre Jordan. It's frustrating. It's irritating. It's annoying. But that guy's just going to be chilling on the roster. So take the hood Jordan port out of this. We're going Holiday and Turner uh, for Harris, TLC, Claxton, and a first. Mildly interesting. I, I mean, Miles Turner of the Nets, sign me up. I'm cool with that. Let's do that tomorrow. Um, not sure if the trade completely works, but still, it's fun. I appreciate it. Second to last now, again, Dallas shaking up the roster. The, the, the KP trades get me really excited. I don't really have an explanation for why. Uh, New Orleans getting KP, love that, and Terry Rozier, and Devontae Graham in a sign and trade. The Hornets are getting Steven Adams, love that. Jackson Hayes, love that, in a second-round pick. The Mavs are getting Lonzo in a sign and trade or just, yeah, sign and trade and a second round pick. Okay, so the Mavs are dumping KP. They don't want KP anymore. It's not for them. They bring in Lonzo. I think Lonzo is a really good fit uh, with Luka as an on and off ball player as long as LeVar doesn't start losing his mind saying that Lonzo is a better player than, than Luka, then everything's good there, right? The Pelicans... That KP fit is something I've thought about for two years with Zion. Ever since Zion, you know, was going to come to the league and was clear he was going to be the first pick of the draft, I've been thinking about what's the ideal front court partner for Zion Williamson, assuming that he doesn't become like a really good three point shooter, right? Well, that guy is someone that can protect the rim and shoot and doesn't need the ball in his hands on post ups. And prior to coming to Dallas and completely forgetting how to play basketball, that guy was Chris Tapps Porzingis. So if they think they can rehab that and figure that out, New Orleans is an interesting fit. Then you're getting two more backcourt players in Terry Rozier and Devontae Graham that are more offensive-oriented, that are more playmaking-oriented than Alonzo, who's become a bit more of an off-ball player at times for New Orleans. I'm cool with that. I like that. Uh, for the Hornets, Steven Adams and Jackson Hayes immediately just fixes, solves their back, their front court, excuse me, issues. They've had problems at the five spot uh, for a while now. They bring in talented players, not only a guy that's going to help them now and Adams, help them make the playoffs, but also Jackson Hayes is a talented player and I'm sure a player that New Orleans fans right now are looking at this kind of being like, I don't really know if we want to give up uh, Jackson Hayes. And then we've got some other stuff where they re-sign Malik Monk. They get Josh Hart uh, in a sign and trade here as well. And then again, Dallas getting Lonzo. I'm cool with all this. I like all this. Uh, it just depends on if the Mavs are willing to just completely throw their hands up about KP. Uh, if they are, it's, it's at least an interesting one. Okay, last up. Obligatory Lakers slash Kyle Kuzma trade, right? The Hawks getting Harrison Barnes and, and, and Ramsey. Okay. A first round pick and a second round pick from Sacramento. The Lakers getting Buddy Heald. Interesting. The Heat getting Marvin Bagley. Super interesting. The Kings. Kyle Kuzma, Precious Achua, 
22nd pick in the draft this year and a future Lakers first 25. They can't they can't trade that, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so Atlanta. Is is Atlanta just getting players for free here? Oh, okay. There's a John Collins sign and trade. I completely missed it there at the bottom of the screen. So they're moving on from John Collins. They're like, ah, we don't really wanna, we don't really want to pay you, but we'll bring in a guy in, in Harrison Barnes that can be a combo forward, can shoot the ball, can really defend, and we've got a future first. I like that. I'm cool with that. That, that wait, I actually now that I understand that John Collins is involved, this is actually really intriguing. I actually like this way more because Harrison Barnes is cool fit in Atlanta. Harrison Barnes is a good player. You don't have to pay Collins all this money. You're getting value out of him. You're not giving up on the roster. You get the future pick from Sacramento. I'm cool with that. The Lakers, get Buddy Heald. Shooting, playmaking, need that. And you're actually giving up halfway decent value here uh, when it comes to you know two picks. Again, one of which you can't trade, but whatever. Uh, and then Kuzma, which you can think whatever of him. I like that. The Heat, giving up Precious. I know they really like Precious Achua, but simply from an upside standpoint, Marvin Bagley is super, super intriguing if you think that you can fix him if you're Miami. And then the Kings getting Kuzma, Achua, Two firsts in this scenario and John Collins for Bagley Barnes and a future first. That's super, super intriguing. I, I Initially, I looked at this quick glance and I was like, ah, I don't know. It's intriguing. It's cool. But I actually like this a lot now. This might actually be my favorite trade in the trade machine. In the trade machine. In the video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep looking at this one over the coming days and, and see if I can figure something out with this. Because this is really, really cool. It fixes what's Atlanta going to do with John Collins without completely screwing up the momentum of the roster what's the what's the big lakers move going to be uh, you know what are the kings going to do with their backcourt because they've got so many guys and it fixes the where's kyle kuzma question so or where's kyle kuzma going to go question i guess so i'm i'm into this one i like this one but that's going to be the end of the trade machine that's going to be the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed it if you did leave a like right on it consider subscribing to the channel for more nba content every single day and check out more videos for me as well uh, for the boxes on screen I'll catch y'all next time. I love doing these trade machine videos. If you have more for me, you can leave them in the comment section or over the website that I have linked in the description. That's where I got all of these from. Uh, typically what I scroll through. We'll do real trade machines where I ask you guys specifically for trades once we get further into the off season. But this is just a really good place, a really good platform for me to just go out there, find some fake trades, talk about them, make some content and content that hopefully you guys enjoy. With all those things said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Once again, my name is Tucker. Come check me out on Twitch and I'll see y'all next time.